transplant. The final step of the stem cell transplant is the transplant itself. Your stem cells that were previously mobilized and then collected will be returned to your body. In this video, we will answer some frequently asked questions about the transplant process. Hello, I'm John Pagel. I'm the Chief of Hematologic Malignancies and the Director of the Stem Cell Transplantation Program here at Swedish Cancer Institute. When will I start the transplant process? The purpose of the collection and storage of the stem cells is for a subsequent transplant. And transplants are, of course, important for hopefully eradicating as much disease or all the disease that might be still in a patient's body. So the idea is that we would give a very high dose of therapy and hopefully kill every single malignant or cancer cell, but we're also going to wipe out the normal blood forming cells, the normal bone marrow cells during that time. That's a procedure that's okay to do because we're going to pull those cells out of the freezer, reinfuse them into the patient, and over time, they'll go on to make normal cells and to make uh, normal recovery after a transplant. So the transplant procedure typically happens about a month after we have collected the stem cells. What kind of chemotherapy do I need before the transplant? The type of chemotherapy that patients receive is variable depending, again, on the patient in particular or the specific disease. With diseases such as multiple myeloma, we commonly use a drug called melphalan. It's a very common approach for stem cell transplant. Whereas patients who might have non-Hodgkin lymphoma, as an example, would get a completely different regimen, and it may be delivered in the hospital for those patients. How many cycles of chemotherapy will I need? The number of cycles of the chemotherapy as part of the transplant is just one. We give one very large dose of chemotherapy. Again, often and most often, it's done as an outpatient. Patients can go home after getting their therapy. But that dose of treatment is high enough that we will kill all the normal blood cells in the bone marrow. And again, the goal is to kill all the remaining malignant disease cells. When do I get my stem cells back? How does this happen? So stem cells, of course, are stored in the freezer. This is part of what we call an autologous transplant. Auto or autologous meaning using the patient's own stem cells. So we give, as part of the transplant, a high dose of chemotherapy, as we've described. And then typically, two days later, we come back with a reinfusion of those stem cells. So we pulled them out of the freezer, thawed them out, and then reintroduce them to the patient, just like a normal blood transfusion. It's really that simple. And those cells, those stem cells, know where to go. They like to find their home, set up shop, and then over time go on to make normal, healthy blood cells. Are there side effects of the infusion? The infusion lasts a variable number of hours depending on how much volume or amount of stem cells we're delivering back to the patient. So it could last anywhere between an hour or several hours. And rarely, but sometimes we have so much volume or so much stem cells that we need to deliver back that we might even deliver it over two days. Do I need to stay in the hospital for the transplant? Transplants now are typically largely done as outpatients. Not all of them, however. Sometimes we have to have patients in the hospital to get their transplant. But in general, the transplant can be done as an outpatient. Now, importantly, we recognize that patients might have a complication of some sort at some point. Very common to have fevers, as an example, that we take very seriously, and those kinds of things commonly necessitate a hospital stay. But in general, we try and do this all as an outpatient and patients typically do extremely well. When will I be ready to go home? The recovery time for a transplant, of course, is highly variable. It depends on the patient, in particular the age of the patient, 
maybe what we call their performance status, meaning how fit the patient is going into the transplant. And of course, it has a lot to do with how they were treated, what the chemotherapy in particular was prior to the transplant. But that all being said, patients usually have recovered fairly well and are doing quite well two to four weeks after the transplant, but they're not feeling perfectly 100% back to normal. People are still doing things, they're eating, they're up and about, but it may take three, maybe even as long as six months before you go from 85% to 100% as an example. But most people are doing extremely well after two to three months. What do I need to be cautious of when I go home? The post-transplant period is important, but it's also important to realize that people have to have a normal routine and a day-to-day -day existence at home. It really comes down to common sense. We need good hand-washing measures. We need to stay away from sick contacts. We need to stay away from infectious sources. So we try not to allow anyone to change baby diapers, clean up after pets. We need to stay away from working in the yard or working in the soil where we may have spores of fungus as an example. Also, we encourage patients not to work with wood and in particular in a wood, wood shop or even anywhere with damp wood materials. We also, of course, ask people to not travel to third world countries and to again use common sense in how they approach their exposures. Common question is around food and what kind of food people can eat. In general, after an autologous transplant, as people have recovered, they can eat really any food that seems appropriate for them. But if it looks like it's a dirty food or contaminated, of course, common sense would tell us to stay away from it. But in general, there are no specific major restrictions on food. Again, I want to stress, it comes down to common sense, hand washing, and making good decisions. Will I need a caregiver after the transplant? Do I need a caregiver or can I stay by myself? How do I do this after the transplant has been done? It can be a little different for each patient. It depends on how well they're doing. But in general, in the immediate time from the transplant to the significant recovery, which takes again about a month, people will need a caregiver. The purpose of the caregiver is important. It's to help with delivering medications. There are multiple visits to the doctor's office, transportation, helping with food and meals, and to make sure that the patient's doing fine. And in particular, we ask caregivers to pay close attention to infections or fevers that could develop or any other problem that would require them to be seen rather quickly. Who should I talk to if I have questions throughout the collection and transplant process? You will have a team, a transplant team, that will be intimately involved with your care. You can approach any of that team for help and guidance at any time. You will have contact information for the doctor, the doctors on call, how to reach the nurses, the social worker, and everybody that's intimately part of your team. There will always be access to your providers at all times through the transplant process and the recovery procedure.